Hi, Fearless Ambition. How is everyone today? I am so excited to bring this live training with Dave Elliott. So if any of you are reading the book, Conscious Communications, that you then you know that the coaching exercise in chapter two is the 100 things list. And I actually learned that from Dave because he was my relationship coach and technically still is. So from there, I, I really enjoyed doing this 100 things list because it, it was a pivotal, pivotal moment in changing my life and I had to share it in the book and I've shared it many, many times. So I want to say hi to Dave Elliott, who is from Legendary, Legendary Love for Life, which I typically know that, but <laughs> hi, Dave. Hi, thank you so much. I am just delighted to be here today. I love everything that's happening for you. I'm celebrating your success every step of the way. So it, it's a privilege and an honor for me to be here with you too. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, Dave, I, I have really appreciated um, all the encouragement that you've given me along the way. So I know today we're going to talk about um, knowing and showing your value. So can you tell me why that is, first of all, tell me what it is and why it's so important. Awesome. Thank you very much. So basically, it's a really important part of what I do for my clients. You know, a lot of times, you know, I work with amazing women all over the world uh, who struggle. They're, they're exceptional in just about every area. Maybe you know something about this. They're really great in business. They're great moms a lot of times. They're, they're, they're smart. They're educated. They're, they're awesome in so many ways. But the one area, and it's usually about some unresolved wounds or some things that didn't go well in the past and, and some expectations that are maybe not accurate or maybe even some misunderstandings about the elements of masculine and feminine and how they interact a lot of times there's wounds in the area of relationships and so one of the things that i have you know developed to counteract that is to uh, rather than focus on what's wrong we've got to shift that focus into what's great and so i developed this exercise that you shared in the book to literally begin to focus on what's great so instead of like showing up on a date and uh, ladies i'm sure you know uh, you know i hear it all the time from my clients so if i say something like oh oh what does he think of me i should does this dress look okay oh i shouldn't have said that or something like that you get those thoughts in your mind that are less than productive because literally you're focusing on what may be wrong rather than focusing on what's great so i help flip the script and i help my clients focus on what's great and those are what are the traits that you bring to the table the incredible awesome traits that not only you value and that you already know you possess but you forget about it when you're too busy focusing on what you don't have uh, so i help them get really conscious and really um, clear on what it is they bring to the table and the reason I call this particular exercise the magic of 100 is because there's just something about 100. If you see 100 uh, on a page in front of you and you're looking down and you're like, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, and you know it and you feel it, like, and I do a whole exercise uh, beyond that to actually get it into your body and feel it, uh, it becomes really powerful when you start showing up on dates differently, showing up in life differently. Uh, because you're really clear on, on rather than than challenges, what may be missing. So, Magic of 100 is is a great exercise. It really is a game changer. So, I'm happy to talk about it with you today. Yeah, and you know, I want to add to that that it's so true. And if you're reading the book, then you know my story is that it wasn't in really until I got to number 99 and and number 100 when I said number 99, I am radiant, and number 100, I'm a powerful creator. That really things started to click in because my thought process on that is like the first 30, 40, even 50 things on the list. You have to get through the superficial. So when you get through that superficial layer of like I like my long hair and I like my long legs and you know I like my smile then what happens is you make your brain sweat and you get to the real things that are special about you right so what is the downside Dave when you don't know your value and I know you know that's when I first came to you that's where I was at so what's the downside of that 
Yeah, well, so here's the thing. I'm sure we've heard that old expression, you know, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And so if you're there walking in, you know, like feeling anxious and like, does he like me? Or is this going to go well? Is he going to text me? Is he going to, are we going to go out on a second date? Like that, that's totally unproductive because you're going in there, you're not going to be at your best. So I've lost Dave a little bit. Don't worry about it. I'm sure he'll yes. reconnect with us. There he is. What he's talking about is the car. So Dave, we're losing you a little bit. That's okay. We'll get back on track. But what he's saying is that you show up differently when you know what your value is. And I know that a lot of you that are watching this, or maybe that you're watching it later, you know, the issue may not be like knowing your value on a date, but your issue might be um, knowing your value in business. And I just want to make the point that there is no difference between knowing your value on a date and knowing your value in business business. So this information applies whether you are single, whether you're married, whether you're in a relationship, looking for a relationship, or whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're male or female. Like when you understand and you know your value, you're going to show your value. And at the end of that story, it was that people started coming up to me and telling me how radiant I was. So it was really a, a wonderful, wonderful story. So Dave's back. Uh, Dave, we lost you for just a second. It's not a big deal. It happens um, all the time on the internet, right? And um, uh, yes, so since I'm single, like I'm still a single lady, y'all. I know it's hard to believe. I want to ask you, or I want to know, what would you say are the most important and powerful traits that men are looking for in women? So um, I talk about that. I have a thing called man magnetics formula. I, I think it's important when, when you understand masculinity, when you understand masculine behavior, how it's different, how it actually benefits you. Again, focusing on what's great. I think too often um, ladies focus on like what's wrong with it or why they're insensitive or unfeeling or that kind of thing. Focus on what's great. There are like some huge attributes and upsides for the masculine behavior of a guy who is just like there. He's rock steady. He's the rock. He's got you, you know, when you know, he's logical, he's analytical, all those things. Those are great assets in a relationship, in a partnership. Um, he, You're appreciative. You're grateful. Uh, nurture, nurturing, like that's a huge thing because it's really as a partnership. So it's two people providing great things for one another. And then, you know, easygoing, not about drama and uh, uh, just things like that. Uh, then you get to the place where you're actually captivating. Like that's the thing where guys like got you in his mind all the time and he's thinking about you. So, you know, it's really uh, those, those traits that like, get a man's attention and he's like, whoa, she's different. She's not like anyone I've ever met before. And, and I just want to back up for a moment and uh, to say to your point, knowing your traits, doing that, Taking a quick look at your list of 100 before you walk into a meeting with your boss when they're having you're having an, or a negotiation or you're trying to sell something and close the deal, it absolutely works then too. If you know you're walking in there, it's like you know, you're you're great at what you do, you're really smart, you're knowledgeable, you're wise, and all those things that helps there too. So it is even with your kids. If your kids are like you know. Kids are really great at being able to find those little areas where you might doubt yourself. So again, right. if you get a little reminder, like you know, all of a sudden you think, "Oh my God, what am I doing? I'm a terrible mom or a terrible dad." Uh, you know, if you start to read that, you're like, "No, no, perfection isn't on the list. It shouldn't be because no one's perfect. Uh, that's not the way this thing goes." But it's a great reminder of just what you bring to the table at your best, and it puts you in a framework in your head mentally when you're at your best. So I think that's awesome. You know, and to, to add to that, as far as like using this in business or wherever you need to find it useful, is that um, if you're not familiar with the Amy Cuddy TED Talk, I think they call it fake it till you make it. 
it is really powerful. And what she's talking about is power posing. And I think that the way that I can connect this to what Dave is doing and talking about and teaching people is that when you are, when you make these neural connections in your mind about what is good and valuable about yourself, that it is automatically going to radiate from the inside out. So we all know, you know, when you're around somebody, you can empathetically pick up their mood you know we intuitively know how the next how the person sitting next to us is feeling because of their body language and so what i'm saying is when you get these hundred things in your body when you get them in your mind and your body then you're going to portray yourself differently you're going to come across as more confident and let's face it confidence is key in life right now when you display confidence you're you're going to have just people attracted to you magnetically i like that you say the man magnetics formula is that what you called it yeah yeah i created that ac acronym magnetics yeah i i love that um all right so we are going to talk about and i know that you have a free gift today so anyone that's listening to this either live or or later when we put the replay up you'll be able to access dave's um free gift so before we go on with my next question i just want dave to tell us like what all are we getting with your free swag today so because we're talking about this i created um I created a download of free giveaway for my clients to help them out with this exercise. But again, I want to just point out, you made a great point about you in your book, you talk about, and I love what you said about it in your book. Thank you again so much. Um, you said one of the powerful aspects of it was that it took you about four weeks and a few reminders to work through it. Um, and that's really important. But now I, I am going to offer you a bunch of helpful suggestions on things that you might bring to the table. Now I am not trying to do your homework for you. I think there is great uh, benefit in you using your methodology of like pushing through and coming up with them, uh, you know, from your own you know top of mind awareness and focusing on them. Because again, you got that pow powerful gift that when you when you came up with number ninety nine and one hundred they were not only great and not only felt wonderful to finish the assignment they became foundational because those were the ones you really struggled with and it became a big part of your identity going forward and it was a shift mm -hmm. that being said i'm still going to offer it because i think it's valuable so i created this little um a pdf download of uh, how to focus on like those great attributes and i gave a list of like a hundred plus fantastic attributes for the feminine especially um to embody and there's a list of them and there's uh and i've got like a thing where you can actually post it and write on it and put it on your mirror so you can be reminded of it and i call it five to thrive now five to thrive is again you're not going to remember all 100 necessarily in a moment but you could pretty much look at that thing post it on your mirror or put it um you know on a screensaver if you want or on your phone you can look at your five to thrive and remember those are the like your top five like essentially power virtues or power traits or something like um you know it's just a powerful reminder and again like if you're walking into a meeting walking into a date you know doing a negotiation trying to close the sale take a look at those really quickly take a look at them on your phone before you walk in and it's like boom you've got it it's in your body so it's really a great reminder. So I wanted to offer that gift for people who may be struggling. Again, really recommend you do it by yourself first. Try to get there. And then if you need some help, it's there. And you know what? I'd like to just say that because there's so many people in the group that are doing the guidebook that, you know, we can post as we're getting as we're getting more and more things on our list please post them in fearless ambition so that we can start sharing and maybe even like get ideas from each other about like, Oh yeah, you know, she posted that she's a great mom or she's a, you know, she's a great cook. Then, you know, what if I'm like, I might resonate with that and want to put it on my list. You know, when I, um, 
a long time ago, when I first started sharing this exercise with other people, I actually went on a radio show and it was in March. I don't remember what year because it's been several years ago, but um, it was International Business Day, International Women's Day. That's what it was, International Women's Day. And I just put out on the radio, like, I want every woman to start creating this list of 100 things that they like about themselves. And I kid you not, the radio station phone started ringing off the hook. And they said, Mary, nobody has ever, ever called the radio station during a show to talk to someone. But people were like, they were hungry for this. They, they wanted more. So what are some of, okay, what I love about Dave, and Dave and I have known each other for a very, very long time, is that Dave is the kind of coach that he's going to be interactive with you during your dating process. So whether you're, you know, trying to get dates or whether you're already dating someone or you have someone that you even have a crush on, Dave helps you, Dave just helps like make sure you keep your brain from going to like what I call crazy making. Because yeah. with um, things between guys and girls, you can really get to crazy making and you can get there pretty quickly, um, in my opinion, at least I could. So um, yeah, whenever it would be like, he could help me interpret what was going on in the guy's mind. And I, I just truly love that. I speak, so, the language. I speak guy. Fluently. He's a guy. Yeah, he is a guy. So uh, what's a secret that you can share with us about how to make sure that you can get a second date? Uh, okay, so I did another download all about that second date formula. So, um, you know, I talked about that five to thrive idea. But mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a thing that I talk about, too. Again, it's about flipping the script. It's about, you know, Knowing your five to thrive, those five great traits that you bring into the date with you and you're feeling really good and you got them in your body, you're feeling great, you're going to make a great impression. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is I I was sharing this with you about kind of in the about public speaking. It's about thinking when you meet someone, you know, rather than turning it into a job interview kind of thing, we're like, so tell me about you. What do you do? Where do you want? Where are you from? Where did you go to school? All that stuff. Like, uh, that's the the process of getting to know one another, that's, you know, that's good information. But one of the things that I like to do is, you know, I always say, you know, whether it's going to be like a 30 minute coffee, coffee date, or it's going to be the first night of the rest of your lives together. The one thing that always makes you come across great is if you listen, interpret and feedback with someone. So what I suggest is you, you, your assignment is three to five things reflected back to them about what you appreciate about them that they've told you. So for instance, if someone, you know, tells you about, you know, they started their own business or an entrepreneur, you know, a great piece of feedback would be, you know, I, I really respect someone who can start their own business and keep it thriving for, you know, 10 years or 12 years. You know, most businesses fail inside of like a short time. For you to have done it so long, that really says a lot about you. That's impressive. Or if they say, you know, um, you know, I like to volunteer in the community. You know what? That's awesome. I really appreciate someone who wants to give back beyond them. Or if they say they're a great parent or, you know, really uh, close to their kids, of course you would expect it. Not everyone is, but we, we love it and we want to reward those great values, things that you align with. So whatever it is, or they're an athlete or they're, you know, they, physical fitness is important to them. So they work out four times a week. You say, you know what? I really, really respect someone who does it. So it's always about what do you appreciate? What do you respect? What do you notice? Um, you know, what do you honor about them? And, and feed it back. And here's the thing. At the end of that date, when you've done this a number of times, they're going to be thinking, I don't know what it is about this person, but I think I want to see them again. I like the way I feel when I'm with them. And it, that's pretty much my second date formula in a, in a nutshell. Basically, you know, people like people who are like them. So again, if you're showcasing the values, that's really what this is about, is values in common, you know, entrepreneurial spirit, uh, hard work, commitment to health, all those things, these are values. And if you're showcasing how these values are, you know, reciprocated, uh, reciprocated, uh, they'll, they'll respond to that. And it's a really good bet that you're probably going to get a second date if you're showing up in that way. So I think it's important. 
And I'm going to, again, um, I'm going to take what Dave said and I'm going to like add a little sprinkle because just some things that I've been studying that goes along with this, which is called um, conversation starters. So like, let's just say that your date isn't opening up, but people, people love it when you make them feel important. Um, men and women, everyone loves to feel special and important in your eyes. And so all of those things, it's like you're picking out the key word of the conversation and then you're you're just giving it back to them. The same is true if you're in a business meeting um, or if you're pitching your services, ask more questions than you tell them what you do. So um, a really, so here's some good ones that I know about. All right. What what personal passion projects are you working on? You know, like if you ask your date or or the person that you're in a meeting with, you know, what what are your personal passion projects? And then you listen for what they say. You know, maybe they're working on some travel. Maybe it's philanthropy. Maybe it's um, like, especially with men, you know, one of the things that I've known or that I've started to learn over the years is that building their career is very, very important. And they 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 just need that. And um, I'm kind of the same way. Like I love it when my career is in place and I love to talk about things that are going on. So you could ask a question like, you know, that's really interesting, you know, that your passion is coaching baseball. When did you start doing that? You know, did you play baseball as a as a young person? Um, you know, or say like, What's the best way that, you know, how do you get these kids' attention? Like, how do you get them to focus on you? Or maybe you say, I bet those kids look up to you like you are just a god in their eyes. And, you know, so you take what they're telling you, whether this is on a date or whether it's at a business meeting, and you get some, you get some uh, conversation starters going so that the person just lights up inside. Because we all know that saying, people don't remember what you said, they remember how you made them feel. And what Dave is talking about, and Dave, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about that, like creating a feeling of want and desire in the other person. Well, and again, I love what you said too about uh, talking about your personal passion project too, because the other side benefit of that is as soon as you talk about yours, well, you get lit up and then you get radiant, which is your number 99, which I think is probably my number one. So it's like a it's like a reverse engineering of how you get lit up, because when you're talking about your personal project, uh, something that makes you feel great, you're lit up from the inside, too. And that's that that magical, special thing that like even I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. The truth is the radiance. That's like the secret thing that like will get a man's attention, even if he's even if he's married or even he's not looking, but if, if someone who's radiant or lit up, or even even if it's just some uh, another man, even someone who's radiant, someone who is feeling great, someone who's on top of their game, loving mm -hmm. life, we all respond to that passion. It's passion. So right. like that's the thing that gets people's attention and lights them up. So I wanted to just respond to that. Thank you for adding it. What was your question for me about in uh, how do you light up desire or something what was it i was saying because what's so important is is um people remember how you made them feel so i yes. was looking for like another tip of how you can make someone walk away from their interaction with you like wanting more like wow i just feel really good when i'm around that person so we talked about like um we talked about some verbal cues so what would be some other things like maybe body language eye contact um, what are some other things that, or just even one that just when a, someone walks away from you, they feel good. Right. So uh, we've covered some of the simplest ones about, you know, language and body language and those things and how we communicate. The other, oh, the other one, here's a great one. I wanted to say this earlier. You know, there have been some studies that talk about it, the art of communication out of 100 percent, only 7 percent is words. Right. And the rest of it is, most of it is body language, but the part we haven't talked about yet is tonality. And again, yeah. it's tonality, how does that show? It's, it's your tone of voice, it's your excitement, it's your radiance that's projected in your voice. So tonality is another one too. If you're upbeat and feeling great and like, hey, how are you? 
and you're reaching out and you're maybe touching them on the shoulder like oh wow it's really great to see you or if you leave them with a with a firm handshake or a big hug now especially if they're a kinesthetic person and so they connect with uh, feelings like that uh, that would be really great now some people you want to read them also if they're a little bit standoffish maybe they don't want the hug or whatever um, that's a little bit more of a deeper dive on how to read that kind of thing but that's a good one so if you focus on you know body language confidence and confidence that's another huge one if you add that on your five to thrive list that's one of the absolute best that's the one thing in fact that masculine and feminine is at the top of their list confidence we all want someone who's confident but bottom line we all want to feel like wow look at her or look at him i think i got the better part of this deal and that comes from confidence so yeah. it's a really great place to show up. Just, you know, owning the space you're in, owning, owning yourself, knowing who you are. That's great. So we've just got about five minutes left, Dave, and I want to spend that space. I'm going to, I'm going to be, of course, um, I'm going to have you tell us where you can get our book, get your book, The Catch Your Match Formula. Um, but before we go there, because I, I just, if anybody is single and looking, I definitely recommend Dave's book. So, because I've like known him for so long and I know that he really is an expert. Even if you just go to his website, legendaryloveforlife.com, you're going to find the articles that he's, that he's written and he I've, I typically share his articles because I find them so incredibly true to life. And to me, it doesn't matter like if you're single, if you're married, because the, this advice applies to human beings. And that's what's important. But before we get to the book and how people can find you, I want to know what is your current personal passion project you're working on? Ah, okay. Thanks for letting me be lit up. So I'm working on a, a project actually where I'm taking what I do individually one-on-one -on -one and I'm turning it into a an online product actually. Uh, it's a six, six module program that people can download and go through it at their, uh, in their time at their pace. So it's like it's there online 24 seven, you could go through it, do all the exercises and you could do it. Uh, I'm just, uh, sharing it and putting it online and you, you have access to it. So I'm just, it's another way. Um, you know, look, essentially what I, I do, what I do, because my, my whole thing is my wife and I, we're committed. We want to, our tagline, if you will, or our mission statement is, you know, we want to travel the world to touch, move and inspire to create even more love in the world, one person or couple at a time. And so that's why I say it's sometimes a lot of the information I share is useful for married couples as well. And, and it translates into business too, because it's all about just bringing us all together and how do we all get along even more effectively. Um, and then, so that's that's the project that I'm working on. And I also, like you, I've got a couple of more books uh, that I'm really excited about. One of the things that uh, the next book in my, that I've already begun outlining and I'm really excited to get to once I finish my project, uh, my, my um, online training modules, um, that's been a huge project and a big undertaking. Once I finish that, the next book that I'm really excited about writing is all about understanding why we, uh, our subconscious attractions, um, why we're attracted to people for all the wrong reasons. And it's all about healing un uh, unhealed wounds from childhood and understanding them and being able to heal them so you get on the other side. It's basically why, why you keep attracting the same types of people over and over again, but they always look different. But in, in hindsight, when you look back, it's like, oh my God, it's the same issue. Especially like if there's an issue with like rejection or abandonment or something like that in your past. Uh, those things keep coming up. Like the fascinating thing is they look different every single time. Like I've had clients who say, you know, if they have a rejection or abandonment issue from their childhood, it will come up with like, I've had clients who had a, a spouse pass away at an early age, that wanted to break up, found out, you know, he was lying, he was married. Like there's all kinds of ways that they could be rejected or abandoned. And it looks different every time, but we don't put the pieces together uh, when we're first meeting them because they look different. Oh, this is totally different from the last time. But then at the end, when we start to look at it, like, oh my God, it's the same issue. So uh, that's the next thing I'm really excited about writing about. So it's, it's a fantastic, um, I think it's a game changer when people get it because it's huge. Yeah. And there's, there's all kinds of just great information in Dave's first book. I know you've got that quiz in there and that's one of the things that I've always loved is that, uh, what do you call your quiz? So you're talking about in the catch your match book? 
I think you call it KISS or the KISS quiz. I know it's a quiz you did with me, and it was all about, like, finding out my needs. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, your love strategy. I love call it the Hugging, hugging Kiss Hierarchy. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's love a the Kiss thing. Hierarchy. So basically, that's my version of like five love languages for people who might have heard of it. It's written by Dr. Gary Chapman. It's a fantastic book. The reason I created Hugging Kiss Hierarchy is because I thought there were a couple of others that he doesn't cover. And also, when I was first doing it, like I had this experience where I would occasionally forget one or two of them, and I didn't like the way that worked out didn't i didn't like how it felt so i came up with this thing so when i do hug and kiss like i have got a prompt on the letter so i can go down and it's easier for i think easier for me to remember easier for other people to remember too so because they've got this uh, acronym that i think is convenient and a good way to unpack a lot of information so understanding a hug and kiss hierarchy is understanding like what i said to you earlier like there are some people who are all about the H is human touch. Some people love to be hugged and hold hands and kiss and be affectionate. And other people are like, whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. I don't know you that well. They right. might be like, um, you know, they might be about unselfish service or they might be about kind words. Like the way to connect with them is compliments, kind words. Right. So those are some of the different styles. And it's really important to understand that. And when you understand what someone's specific love language is, it's like it's like having the combination to their vault that cracks open their heart. And they're like, oh my God, they get me. Like, I feel so good when I'm around them. It's because you're literally, like I said, speaking to them in their language um, and not you know, forcing yourself on them. Because the big mistake that people make is they assume everyone has their language. So if you're you know, Mr. Huggy Feely, you know, and, and and the person you're dating is not, and you're constantly like hugging and holding hands and stuff, and they're like, Ugh, they're they're uncomfortable with it. So it's just important to connect with them and meet them on their terms. So okay, just um, real quick, just uh, can you say the full title of your book and where we can get it? Sure. So the the title of my book, is, and I think I've got one here. Yep, oh, I've got one here. The Catch Your Match Formula. Can you see it? Absolutely, it's beautiful. Awesome. So it's called the Catch Your Match Formula, and it's specifically to help you write a really great dating profile, the kind that gets results and the kind that gets people's attention. And it uses a lot of the exercises that we've talked about, understanding your love strategies, understanding what you bring to the table, that kind of stuff. So uh, it really does connect a lot of the things we talked about today. And I just want to I just want to mention in closing that Dave's also a member of Fearless Ambition. So if you ever have a question and you you just put it out there, I know Dave if he sees a question in there about a relationship, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're dating, whether you're even just thinking about dating for the first time, I really have a feeling if you um if you put that question in the group and Dave sees it, I know he'll answer it. And if I see the question, I will tag Dave so that he can see it. So that's true this week and that's true a year from now because Dave, I'm in a lot of groups with Dave and he is super consistent about answering questions like and just being super real about it. So thank you so much, Dave. I really appreciate this, this training today. Absolutely, my pleasure. It was a great time. I'm really, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. A lot of fun. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.